in today's episode. Beauty and Philosophy of Patchwork Handmade carpet weaving is for the patient and for those who love their work. Azerbaijani national motifs in the works of sculptor Mamet Rashidov. In the workshop of patchwork sewing, Gulmira Walihan is finishing work on another blanket. The stitching process is automated and the specialist can only properly direct the fabric, although all the work here, as in the old days, is made by hand. There are types of blocks that you can't sew except with your hands. It includes hexagons, our Kazakh traditional type of block. It is sewn using special lines, manually. This way, one blanket is sewn for up to six months. Patchwork is painstaking and time-consuming work. That's why Handmade products are highly valued all over the world. This type of needlework appeared as utilitarian. That is, if the sweater or jacket wore out, then of course not all its parts fell into disrepair. Some parts stayed intact. And now grandmothers, they were very frugal. There was nothing that they could buy and just throw out. They ripped it all up, kept it in chests, and then a shop on a wheel arrived, where fabrics were exchanged. This began back in the time of the Great Silk Road, when barter was widespread. Since there was little money, people exchanged things if they could. Silk was brought to us, we gave skins and merinos. And then we had such fabrics as Uzbek silk, adras, silk from China and Persian brocade. This was all exchanged and used here. Then it was mixed with some original fabrics, for example, a sackcloth and velvet, and they made beautiful things. Back then it was a utilitarian type, which eventually turned into a great art. Patchwork, a technique for sewing from patches of fabric. Different nations of the world use it. In Kazakh it's called kurach, which means composed or folded. Our grandmothers knew how to combine different textures. It was almost everything. The husband's shirt, the child's pants, diapers. They made such beautiful products, masterpieces. Kurak itself is a sacred type of needlework. It is directly connected with the mathematical abilities of a person, because there you need to calculate everything perfectly, taking into account the color. There is also an ability to share energy here. Whether a person is positive, wise, can he share his energy with everyone? I know that the ornament Koshkarmius, ram horns, can be performed in any product. This means wishing well being for a person and to prosper and grow. Koshkarmius has a direct meaning well being. Kazakhs are stock breeders, nomads. This is what we do best. Therefore, we have Koshkarmius in almost all ornaments, and it also stands out. When we take the ornament, that part of it that was carved, there are insides or remains from the ornament. We use them too. Here is the meaning that the material part is presented in people, but in addition, there is a spiritual component. A person cannot live without spirituality. Gulmira Walihan shares all this knowledge in the courses that she conducts despite the fact of being extremely busy, a lot of work and orders. 
craftswoman has courses for children and she also leads social groups. First, we make the design, then we select the right colors, then we buy fabrics, filler and linings. After that, we sew it all, start with the ornament, since this is the most difficult part. You need to select the elements correctly, as soon as the ornament develops into some beautiful mosaic, everything begins to build up around it, and we get such a beautiful pattern. This is kind of color therapy when you constantly look at this flaps, sew a blanket, select the fabric, mosaics fold. This affects the eye, respectively, the nervous system. Motor skills, that is, when we do something with our hands, needle and sew something, we have all the nervous endings working. And a good company of women is also important. When we get a luxurious result, we completely rebuild the internal state. What is needed to become a master of patchwork sewing? To become a Kurakshe, a master in patchwork sewing, you must combine a lot of qualities. This is primarily responsibility, mathematical ability, patience, mindfulness, pedanticity, since any product must be perfect and carefully made. And there must be a creative approach. Kurakh is not just a favorite thing for Gulmira Walikhan. She considers her mission to preserve the national kind of needlework and pass it on to future generations. And in this goal, Gulmira Walikhan succeeded. After all, her followers are in all corners of our country, and the works of the master are in demand, not only at home, but also abroad. Для меня Курак это возможность молча без слов что-то сказать людям. В каждой изделии мы можем For me Kurakh is not an opportunity to say something to people without using any words. We can include in each product a different detail. A petroglyph of a hunter and our ba, also our national petroglyph. It's our national treasure. Unfortunately, even living in Kazakhstan, many forget about it when we send products to other countries. I would like these people to get products that contain our national heritage as a small postcard, which reflects our national spirit. Handmade products have always been highly valued. Their uniqueness is an exclusivity, whether it's canvas, interior items or clothes. All this is created in a single copy, and even with a great desire, the master will not be able to exactly repeat its work. Today we will talk about how multicolored alasha is made, a carpet made by hand according to the old technology. Hand weaving is a time-consuming process that requires high skill, perseverance and patience. Each carpet goes through many stages of production, from painting and drying yarn, reeling on a loom to finishing and quality control. The manufacture of Alasha requires a lot of work. This is the treatment of sheep's wool, washing, painting, the manufacturing of dense yarn, and then the installation of the machine and pattern selection. For example, this work is performed in the Shemtiru technique. There are certain weaving techniques such as Shemtiru, Aratiru, Kakhpalasha, Tiras Potak, Turkpentiru, and others. And I work in all these techniques. I teach this skill to young girls, daughters-in-law, and sisters.
The preparation of the machine is one of the crucial points on which the entire follow-up process depends. The makeshift machine is a simple structure. The material is the vents, trunks of small trees in diameter. The size of the machine is determined by the size of the future product. The weaving technique developed from simple to complex, starting from products with simple weaving. Over time, more complex techniques for creating patterns appeared. With the help of special sticks, the layout is correctly arranged in compliance with proportions, and the threads, interwined, create an amazing pattern. In order to form an ornament, I move the red and blue threads above to the stick, and from below, the fixing thread moves to one side and is fixed using a saber-shaped stick. The threads are interwoven, the frame with multicolored threads is flipped vertically, forming a pattern in the lower part. In fact, the knots are fixed due to the movement of saber-shaped stick, which must be carefully beaten against the thread to obtain the knots, and then the hand shuttle, alternating the colored threads, weaves them. And again, as you can see between the upper and lower threads, I draw a fixing thread, moving a frame to myself, which keeps the threads from slipping away. Now I'm weaving the threads and bring out the ornament. Once our great-grandmothers together with friends weaved carpets, in the process of work, they started to sing songs, they talked about their youth, it was like a holiday. After finishing work on the carpet, they had a real celebration. The interlocking of threads of contrasting colors creates a deep interpretation of the pattern and background arranged at different levels. Sitting at the loom, the weaver slowly, day after day, month after month, knot after knot, creates a wonderful world, invests her soul, combines the elements of the pattern with great fantasy. And under her hands, a unique improvised composition comes alive. The red pattern with the addition of orange threads is easy to read on a gray background. Geometric ornament gives the carpet a peculiar rigidity and monumentality. In addition to carpets, Arbachsur beautiful and decorative fabric strips are made. They traditionally use geometric and ornamental motifs. This Bachsur pattern strip is designed to decorate the walls of the yurt, and it is also suitable for covering the floor. The Shemtiru technique was used here, and its length is 10 meters. This is a finished sheep's wool floor mat. This alasha is woven out in the technique of tirasbotach. Two, three patterns are interwined. This is a bow, ribbon, or ayak bow. It crossed the dome of the yurt diagonally and was located in its front part. The variety of techniques translates into special texture and picturesque ornamental art. The favorite motifs used by the weaver are bilateral curls, roms, triangles, diamond-shaped rosettes, zigzags with branches, khoshkarmiyus, and rectangles. They all blossom in mixed technique. Behind each woven carpet and ribbons behind their rainbow motifs, one feels the worldview of the weaver, who gives products a special national color. 
colorful symmetry, the balance of the pattern and background conveyed to products made of natural wool and unusual attractiveness. My mother and grandmother taught me weaving in early childhood. About 20 years ago, I gave up weaving, but the skill still remained. While participating in Expo 2017, I noticed that there were fewer masters of the spoke art, and I decided to return and breathe new life into this craft. Since then, I've made over 15 carpets. Amazing sophistication is distinguished by lint-free carpets in which unique, improvised compositions come to life in continuous infinity. Hand weaving is a legacy of folk art which is indestructible. It is so simple and clear, but at the same time mysterious and incomprehensible. Nowadays, you can find a lot of souvenirs on the shelves of the shops, which are made from a variety of materials and using various technologies. Souvenirs remind us of the places visited and the culture of the local people. Both amateurs and professional masters are engaged in the creation of figurines. Sculptor Mamet Rashidov has been making souvenirs for many years. He creates small figures reflecting Azerbaijani national motives. The process is divided into several stages. The master uses clay, but it acts only as a basis for the mold, which is then cast from other materials. This is ordinary clay. It's elastic. You can use plasticin, but I'm used to clay. It's so much easier for me to create compositions. Plasticin works well on the frame, thinner figures. For example, when you create horse and gazelle's figures. To prepare the clay, first we wet it. It shouldn't stick to hands. It's necessary to place it so that air bubbles are removed and make it flexible, but it should not be sticky. Now the clay is in normal condition and we can use it. Ceramicists clean clay from shells and stones, since when it's fired, it can burst, which will lead to damage to the product. We sculptors don't do this because when in contact with water, it can break up. Therefore, it's desirable to avoid using water close to figures. A clay for us is just a shape to prepare a blank that I use to cast the final product. I use a clay figure as a working model. Blanks are either disposable or reusable. Now we're working only on the model. Someone makes it out of wood, someone from plaster. I chose clay. It attracts me with its naturalness. Mm. Now I am manufacturing the Hudafirin bridge. It's three-way. I took the original form from the picture, but maybe I'll make some additions. Or I will leave it as it is. Mostly I work on souvenir type figures. Many of them are ethnic, national images. They decorate the interior, remind of Azerbaijan and its culture. I always try to make the compositions interesting and exclusive. The main thing is to be creative while making each of them. This is art, despite it being a souvenir. Because you put your fantasy, images, a piece of yourself into them. 
Maybe not everyone's gonna like the work, but there will be a person who will definitely buy it. I don't want everyone to like the composition. I just create the way I feel and see. This is the originality of the work. Previously, I created larger works, then I decided to switch to smaller ones. There are more difficulties to move large works. Every time I had to call a truck, and such work is considered monumental. I gave it up. I rarely make large statues. Small figures can be made in the workshop. They don't make me tired much. On the contrary, I get pleasure from such work. The main thing in this work is to start it. Unless you at least start preparing the clay, you don't want to go any further. The main thing is to enter the process. Of course, the work may not work out, the figure may break. Mm -hmm. However, this is not disappointing in any way, because the process itself already brings great pleasure. It fills the soul with energy. Our bridge layout is almost ready, but once again I will finalize the superstructures. I need them to be more natural. This stage of manufacturing of the model is the most important. The clay will light up a little while it dries. I take clay at a brick factory. Many sculptors use this. It happens that work on the figure can last several days. Then you can let the clay dry. In such cases, I cover it. If necessary, before work, you can wet it a little and begin to finish. If it dries, then it's no longer possible to work with it. Cracks will appear and the model will lose its quality. I twist it on the board so that I can see the figure from all sides. This allows you to maintain symmetry. Sometimes you need to smooth some irregularities with a wet sponge. And here, the model is ready. 